Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. What's up, guys? Hey! Hi, guys. I'm just... Can I, can I just... It's late, you know? It's almost 11 p.m. Let's just chill, watch a video. Ryan Shirley, awesome channel. Original link, top of the description to the video. Let's go. Guys, my name is Ryan, and I just returned from road tripping around Iceland, and I want to share with you my favorite places and experiences. So here's my Iceland top 10. Ooh. Oh. Favorite places and experiences. So here's my... Makes me wonder what happened in these layers of history, you know? So... I, I could I could go a whole video. I can't talk, Jesus Christ. But I, I like what happened during these times where you have these giant deposits of these red looking of this red looking material. Anyways. Iceland top ten. I'll, I gotta sit on my hands. I'm pausing already. Hope you guys are doing well. That's insane. Iceland is one of the most beautiful countries in Europe and the world. With volcanic landscapes, endless waterfalls, and gigantic glaciers, Iceland is home to some of the most incredible places. I don't care. Could just forward ahead if you want. Iceland is one of the most beautiful countries in Europe and the world. With volcanic landscapes, endless waterfalls, and gigantic glaciers, Iceland is home to some of the most incredible places on Earth. Let's start this video off at the Icelandic Highlands. Located in the interior of the country, the Highlands are an extremely unique region in Iceland home to otherworldly landscapes. To access the Highlands, you'll need to go on some of Iceland's F roads, Lava which are plant. dirt roads, and it's required to have a four-wheel drive car to go on them. One of the places I wanted to visit most in the Highlands is Landmannalaugar. To reach it, it's about a three and a half hours drive from Reykjavik. And I thought it was going to be a difficult drive, but the F roads weren't that bad. There is a river crossing at the very end, but you can park your car before the river and walk in, and that's what we did. I mean, I couldn't believe the landscapes here. It was so unbelievably colorful with so much raw beauty. We hiked in through some lava fields and up a mountain, and it was amazing to say the least. There's a good amount of volcanic activity in the area with tons of vents shooting out steam. Guys, it's so weird. Uh, the weird is a good, in a good way, but like, Sahara desert looking sand mounds with these hard rock different material with this with, what is this it just it looks like a different planet there's a good amount of volcanic activity in the area with tons I mean of vents that in the shooting best out way. steam. We spent several hours hiking around, and afterwards we explored the highlands around Land Mataluger. I mean, I just couldn't believe the landscapes here. On our way back, we stopped at the crater lake called Blahilur. It was such an epic setting, with the green mountain in the back, and there was also these iconic red craters nearby. Another cool spot was Seagull to Glufur. It's this amazing canyon with several waterfalls and also a good amount of bugs when I was there. After, we're going to take a dip in some warm water waters at the Rikia Dolor hot spring river. Now Iceland is famous for its hot springs and what's special about this one is that it's a river. Now to reach it it's a long uphill hike that took us about an hour to get there. The hot springs are nestled in this valley and there was a lot of volcanic vents shooting out steam adding to the magic. Now there's this nice boardwalk that lined the river and there was a lot of places to get in the water. While we were here it was about 10 degrees celsius outside and about 40 degrees in the water. I mean it felt so amazing. I mean, this place was magical and well worth the long hike to 40, 10 degrees. What is that in Fahrenheit? 1.8 plus 32, 10, 18, 32, 50 degrees. 40. Reach. Afterwards, we're going to visit Thorsmark. Named after the Norse god Thor, this area definitely lived up to its name. It's home to some of the most epic landscapes I've ever seen. Now to get here, it wasn't easy. Our rental car company specifically banned us from driving on this road, and after going on it, I understood why. You'll need to cross several glacier rivers, and some can get really deep. So to get there, we went with a tour company called South Coast Adventure, and they had this beefed up truck with huge tires, Damn, so we went through the rivers, no problem. We first Is that an excursion? Had this beefed up no. truck with huge tires. Sorry, I thought it was a modified version of a really old, uh, of an older car. I, never so mind. we went through the rivers, no problem. We first stopped at this glacier that Holy was covered in ash from a recent dude. volcanic eruption. It was such a dramatic spot. Afterwards, we did this hike to the Valenjukur viewpoint. It took us about 30 minutes to reach the top and offered some of the most incredible views. We got a 360 panorama of Thorsmork and all the valleys and glacier rivers. 
The weather was cloudy and rainy, adding to the epicness of the location. After we came back down and we had to cross this deep river, I mean, I thought we were gonna flood for a second there. We were like four feet deep in the water, but we crossed it, no problem. If you're looking for adventure, you gotta give Thorsmark a visit. Afterwards, we're gonna experience Celia Landsfoss. It's located right off the ring road below Thorsmark. Now, Celia Landsfoss is easily one of the most famous waterfalls in all of Iceland, and with reason, there's a parking lot and just an easy walk to the falls. Guys, now, in all these travel videos I watch, I swear, like, you know, Ryan Shirley, definitely amazing. He might have the best. But some other, you know, Rick Steves Europe, uh, Lifestyle Hal, um, a lot of these great travel channels that show places like in lists like this. And I'm almost trying to tone down how beautiful it looks because sometimes it, it just looks even better in the camera. Even if you do it here, this looks unearthly insane. In all of Iceland, and alive, with reason, I guess, there's a parking is what I would lot say. and just an easy walk to the falls. Now, what makes Celia Landsfoss so special is that you can walk behind it. I mean, the view is unreal, and if you come here during sunset, you'll be able to see the setting sun through the waterfall. I mean, such an incredible place. After it, we're going to continue exploring Southern Iceland. Now, I'd say Southern Iceland is probably the most famous and popular region in all the country. It takes about two to three hours to get here from Reykjavik, and there's just so many attractions and beautiful places. One of the most well-known spots is Skokofoss. It's probably the most iconic waterfall in the country. Its drop is 60 meters high, and the power of the falls is insane. I walked pretty close to the waterfall, and there was rainbows and mist everywhere. Now, one of my favorite destinations in the area is Reynesfjar, Black Sand right there it's like a thumb beach it's this incredible coastline that stretches a few kilometers to the west the sand is so black and unique my favorite feature of the beach is the rainish dringer rock formations there are these jagged sea stacks that jut out of the sea with constant waves pounding on them i mean there was a lot of people on the beach but the further down you go you might be able to find some solitude I mean, question guys so these things here were used to be part of of this you can, here, it's just, it all eroded away by the sea, and this is just what's left. Is that right? That Because I'm wondering, like, how do these get here? And I'm assuming that they're just the remnants of a much bigger cliff that just everything fell around it, and it's all that's left. That's the best guess there I have. There was a lot of people know. on the beach, but the further down you go, you might be able to find some solitude. I and mean, it's such an amazing place, well worth experiencing. While we're still in Southern Iceland, we're gonna visit Fjadra Glufur. I'm sure I screwed up that pronunciation. Anyways, it's located about an hour from the Black Sand Beach. Fjallgrúfur is one of the most famous canyons in Iceland, and with reason. There's a trail that takes you on top of the canyon with several viewpoints, and at the end there's a platform that offers a great view down into the canyon. There's also this little bridge at the beginning that gives you a unique perspective of Fjallgrúfur. There's definitely a few Fire trolls and elves hiding in there. Now afterwards, we're going to continue east on the ring road and visit some of Iceland's glaciers. <sighs> Glaciers. Now, if you look on Google Maps, you'll see the massive Vatna Yoko Glacier, which is the biggest glacier in all of Europe, and it has a bunch of glacier arms that you can visit. One of my favorites is Fina Yoko. It's only a 10 minute hike and you'll be rewarded with this massive glacier with such a unique color. On the western side of the glacier, there was this lagoon. Sorry if I'm pausing a lot, but just get... So this was covered by this. It just receded back and now it's all green. And then this will look like this in however long. Massive glacier with such a unique color. On the western side of the glacier, there was this lagoon with chocolate milk colored water filled with floating ice chunks. Now, one of the most incredible places in the area is Yokosarlan. It's this massive lagoon full of glaciers. The lagoon connects to the ocean. And so when the glaciers float out to sea, some of them wash up on Diamond Beach. And it's the most bizarre thing ever, having this black sand beach Titanic. full of crystal clear ice. I mean, such a fascinating destination. After we're gonna continue heading east and visit one of my favorite places, Stokesness. Located about 20 minutes from the town of Hove, Stokesness is this picturesque black peach with the backdrop of the Vesterhorn Mountain. More it costs about $10 to access the area, You'll drive on this road out to the beach. One of my favorite features was the mounds of grass that made these uniquely shaped sand hills. Now, while we were here, the wind was blowing all the black sand and it just added to the magic of the place. The beach there is really cool. There were some nice waves and the view of the Vesterhorn Mountain is spectacular. 
If you keep heading east on the ring road for about 45 minutes, you'll reach Estrahorn. It's this beautiful mountain with the road wrapping around it, and then there's another black sand beach that extends for several kilometers. After it, we're going to visit Hengifoss. Look at about a three hours drive from Hove. I have to say that Hengifoss is my favorite waterfall in all of Iceland, and it's also the third tallest waterfall in the country with a height of 128 meters. To reach it, it's a decent uphill hike that took us about 30 minutes to get to the waterfall. On the way up, you'll pass the Lit Lanethlos, which is a unique waterfall with basalt columns. Now, once you reach the top, you'll get a whoa. Lanethlos. How is it doing that? Uphill hike that took us about 30 minutes to get to the waterfall. On the way up, you'll pass the Lit Lanethlos. How is it doing that? Lanethlos, which is a unique waterfall with basalt columns. It looks like it's falling not back on the rock, but just like up, up to down, but on a slant. And I'm surprised that... Now, once you reach the top, you'll get a great view of Hengifoss. There's a boardwalk and trail that because leads it's you up on to the it. What's so unique right. about Hengifoss okay. is the That's red awesome. layers of clay sandwiched between the stone. I mean, I've never seen such an intense red in nature. On top of Hengifoss, there's two smaller waterfalls, and then there's just desolate plain that looked like it went on forever. I mean, just such an enchanting landscape. Afterwards, we're going to head over to the eastern fjords to visit Sætis Fjordor. Located in what some believe to be Iceland's most beautiful fjord, Sætis Fjordor is this charming little town, and it's one of Iceland's main cruise ports with ships coming from the Faroe Islands and Norway. One of the highlights of the town is the Rainbow Road that leads up to the main church. Now, if you've seen the movie Walter Mitty, the iconic scene where he longbirds in Iceland is on the road that you drive on on your way to Sætis Fjordor. Now, afterwards, we're going to visit the Stuttlagil Canyon. First time I saw these kinds of structures in, uh, is a Giant's Causeway. And I know they're not, they're all slightly diff different shape, but the, the, the features that go straight up, I know, I, guys, I, it just, it, oh, sorry, okay. Now famous for its basalt call. Look at that. You can reach the canyon by driving about an hour from the town of Iglestadr. Now there's a few ways you can experience the area. You can hike in from the southern side of the river, or you can also go to this parking lot, and then there's some stairs that take you down to the platform, and it gives you a decent view of the canyon. If I could do it again, <gasps> stairs that take you down to the platform, and it gives you Look how cool that looks. You know what Iceland is? It's it's uh, alive. Like the earth is clearly super alive. Every everything looks so new. You know what I mean? The, like all of the earth looks very new. It, it it just it looks like a very young piece of land altogether and I'm sure it you know it being volcanic has a giant reason for that. Uh but yeah, it just it, the whole entire land looks brand new like the a newest in ge in geological terms you know you a decent view of the canyon if i could do it again i definitely hike in from the other side you'll be able to get closer to the rocks and river but regardless the area was just really beautiful and the rock formations here are so fascinating oh. afterwards we're going to continue on the ring road up to northern iceland to visit detifos now famous for being okay. one of the most iceland powerful waterfalls is insane in all of Europe, Detifoss is 100 meters wide and 45 meters tall and is fed by a glacial river. Now to see Detifoss, you can go on either the west or east side. We went on the west side and it's definitely the more popular option. Thirsty. From the parking lot, it was about a kilometer walk to the falls. I mean, I couldn't believe the power of Detifoss. I mean, it was so loud and the hydrated. glacier water was stunning. There was this little area where we could get pretty close to the falls. Then there was a platform above that offered a great view of Detifoss. Now, if you want to visit a less known place with comparable beauty, you can visit Hafrigilsfoss. It's just a short drive from Detifoss, and I was just amazed by the waterfall and the canyon here. It kind of reminded me of the Grand Canyon, just Iceland version. I mean, it's definitely a hidden gem that most people don't visit. Now, if you continue west on the ring road, you'll pass awesome. Lake Mevatin. It's this volcanic lake with some really unique scenery. There's tons of craters that line the lake and also a lot of volcanic activity in the Look area. Like giant barnacles. I will say the bugs here were crazy towards the end of August, so just be aware of that. Now, as you continue driving on the ring road, there's some really beautiful places you can stop at, such as Goldafoss. 
I personally really like the scenery of Eja Fjordor, which is the fjord that leads to Akuyeri, which is the second largest city in all Iceland. Now afterwards, we're going to head to Western Iceland to visit the Snæfellsnes Peninsula. Snæf Located about two hours drive from Reykjavik, the Snæfellsnes Peninsula is home to some incredible scenery. One of the most famous places on the peninsula is the Kirkifil Mountain. I mean, I love nothing more than a perfectly shaped mountain, and I think Kirkifil is about as perfect as they come. It literally is shaped like a wizard's hat. It stands it at It looks like the mountain from the Grinch. Meters. High, and it's believed to be one of the most photographed mountains in all Iceland. It's located just a few minutes from the charming little town of Grundafjord. Or like uh, one of the best places Matterhorn? to view the mountain is from Kirkjufellsfoss. It's a series of waterfalls near the base of Kirkjufell. There's a parking lot that costs about ten dollars, and that's just a short five-minute walk to the falls. I came here for both sunset and midday, and both occasions were stunning. I mean, places don't get more photogenic. Another impressive location on the peninsula is Bjarnafoss. It's this beautiful waterfall that you can get a great view of from the road. Nearby is also the little village of Arnastapi. There's some really cool sea cliffs with unique rock formations and then there's a nice walk along the coast. I also found this unnamed waterfall that cascaded into the ocean and this place is truly magical. Well that is it from my Iceland top 10. There's still so many places I didn't show in this video so I'll definitely be making a part 2. Let me know where your favorite place is in Iceland in the comments below. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok at Shirley.Films. It's Ryan and we will see you later. It's like any of the, any of the places he went here in like a top 10 list would have been number one easily in any other country. That's how crazy this looks. And I know I, I've seen a lot of Ryan Shirley videos, a lot of other videos. They're all awesome and really good photography, very consistently good. And so I almost get like, oh, is this actually better than what I'm going to expect? But you can't, this... All of them were some of the most amazing places I've ever seen on camera. And I would like to see them. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, would appreciate any comments down below. Um, would love if you liked and subscribed. That was awesome. Uh, and I, I hope I didn't pause too much. Sorry about that. Uh, and I, I hope I'll... Blah, blah, blah. I hope I'll see you next time. I can't talk. Jeez. Bye, guys.